I'm fortunate enough, thanks to this channel, to receive products from manufacturers all over the world. So far, the most exotic place I have received something, which is being featured today, is all the way from Brazil. Allow us to say, bom dia to Vonix Car Care. So up until early last year I hadn't really heard of Vonix Car Care until uh, a friend of mine, Paul Dolden, had pointed out he said he tried one of their waxes and they were awesome. So I got a chance to chat to Igor from Vonix Car Care at Wax Stock last year and I interviewed him on camera and the footage from that interview corrupted, I couldn't use it. And I was gutted, he was a really nice chap, we had a really lovely chat, he was very knowledgeable. Anyway, earlier this year he contacted me and asked if he could send me something for a review and I said yes please, that would be fantastic. I didn't expect to receive as much as he sent. So we'll have a look at the products here we're going to be testing today to try out. First of all, I love this, um, they've got, this is Native, so this is their standard Carnuba wax. This is just Carnuba, nothing else in it. I'll talk about Carnuba wax in a second, so that's Native. Then they have native black, you can see the black edition there, can you see that? Yep, there you go. That's the black, is it called Black Vehicles Special Edition? So that's a coloured wax for black paint, uh, but we'll try that on non-black as well. This is Blend, Blend is, uh, if you can see that there it's all shiny, what, I can't read it backwards, Carnuba Silica Paste Wax. What they state is 7 months of protection out of this, 25 uh, applications from the one tub in there. So that's a, a Carnuba and SiO2 blend in there. So it's a, a longer lasting, harder wearing wax. Then we've got native spray wax. So a sprayable version of the paste wax. We have a sprayable version of blend. So this is a sprayable version of the synthetic uh, and natural. Now this one states four months, it does mention SiO2 down on the bottom of the bottle there, if you can see that, hopefully, yeah, there. Uh, so it's a sprayable version of that. We also have a bottle of native cleaner wax. So this one will have some very fine abrasives in it. So it's kind of like a polish in a way. It's a cleaner wax, so it helps to remove some stuff from your paint, you know, in the way of perhaps minor oxidation, perhaps minor scratches and swirls because there's abrasives in there and obviously the wax will fill in as well to a certain extent. So nice, that could be used as a pre-wax cleanser before applying other products. You'll still get protection from this because it does contain wax, but you could use this as a base layer and then top it with a good longer lasting wax. And also here, Diamond V80. Now this one is a synthetic sealant. There's no natural wax in this one. What's interesting about this uh, reading on the back of the label here, find the English bit, here we go. What was interesting was the unique formula, besides aiding in the elimination of small imperfections, promotes a wet and deep looking shine finish. So again, if it improves the look by eliminating small imperfections, again, I'm going to assume that that's a slightly abrasive product, just like the uh, pre-wax cleanser, but this one is a sealant instead. Very interested to try that. Now, Carnuba Wax, if you've never actually seen it, what the raw product looks like, they sent me a couple of these. These are lovely little uh, souvenir type things. So this is type one or T1 Carnuba Wax. This is what it looks like when, uh, when they've got it off the tree before they have fully refined it. And it's a lovely little thing. Let's see if I can just pop this cork off and tap a few bits out there, these flakes. So that is what it looks like, if you can see that there, these little flakes of wax. So the wax comes from uh, a Carnuba uh, palm tree, the, the northern states of Brazil. It's the only place in the world, Brazil's the only country in the world that produces Carnuba wax. Um, and the wax is basically, it comes from a protective coating that the tree uh, creates on its leaves to protect it from the very high temperatures and very arid climate, especially the, the hottest time of the year. It, it generates its own wax to protect its leaves and to keep its moisture inside. So what they do is they harvest the leaves off, they allow them to dry out, and eventually you will get this powder coming off the, the tree, and that's what the wax is based on. 
Uh, they call it eye powder. Very, very interesting stuff. It's, it's interesting to go and read about. The nice thing about the, the boxes is in each box that you get the wax, if you buy the tub of paste wax, what you'll get is a little Vonix branded uh, wax applicator pad, which is nice. And then in here, you'll also get a little booklet explaining about the particular wax you've got and telling you things like how they manufacture it, where it comes from, shows you different uh, stages of the, the manufacture process. It's really, really nice. And what I like here is also a little homage here. If you see on the tin, it's a, it's a pressed metal tin. This pays homage to the Carnuba fronds, the palm fronds that they get the wax from. It's just a really nice little thing. So they do look really classy. I'm looking forward to trying all of these on the cars today. Anyway, enough gabbing, let's get outside. So I separated the bonnet into a few sections and we're starting first with native wax. This is a clear blended wax. It's a very nice pour in the pot. It was a little bit stiffer of a wax. It's a harder wax than I first imagined. Took a few more swipes to get some on the pad, but once it was on the pad, it was very easy to apply to the bonnet. Now, interestingly enough, these waxes don't really have any unnatural scent. They smell just like wax should. They haven't added any special scents to them. It doesn't smell like strawberry or kiwi or mango or chicken or any of these other funky flavors they're adding to things right now. And that means they're not really taking anything away from the experience, but they're not really adding anything to it either. It's just all about the quality of the wax. Moving on to the black wax here, this is native black. You can see here a good squeeze on there and you can definitely see it is a black wax on the foam applicator. These were all being used with their own individual foam applicators that came in the boxes, which is really nice. You can see it is slightly darker to apply to the panel, not by much. There's a very little difference there, but you can see it as I'm applying it onto the panel here. And I did see some rubbing off and transferring onto the green masking tape as well. But it did seem that this one was a little bit smoother and easier to apply than standard native. Now over to the last section on the top, this is blend. So it's a mixture of Carnuba and SiO2. A good swipe. It was a hard wax as well. And honestly, I didn't put a lot on here. As I was applying it across, I kept thinking, I haven't put enough on here. Realistically, you don't need much on the panel. A thin film is all you need, and realistically, you should barely be able to see it. But I did think to myself, there's just not enough on there. So I gave it an extra small swipe and just went over the panel again, just to make sure there was plenty even coverage across the whole panel and you can see it there more defined. There is some more wax there. So I think that's a fair application. Now to the bottom section, we're using the sprays. This is native spray wax. I decided to shield it. There was a bit of a breeze there. I didn't want too much to transfer over to the second section, but two squirts, you can see it. It does look slightly thicker than some waxes. But interestingly enough, after a good wipe over of application, and you can see I'm just spreading it on, you shouldn't let it dry. It says on the bottle, don't let it dry. Simply grab another towel or flip your towel and buff it straight off. So there's no cure time for this product, which is very interesting. But you can see there was some nice slickness and nice gloss there. Now on to the sprayable blend version. And again, two sprays on the panel and I gave one small spray on the towel too because this one was just a little bit more tacky than native. So I spread across just to make sure it's evenly applied to the paint. Don't let it dry, simply buff it back. 
the buff off was exactly the same as the native spray wax. And as I was buffing it, I could definitely feel slickness appearing under the towel, which did not appear beforehand. So it definitely did add some slickness. Now this is the native cleaner wax. And it was a thicker product than I imagined. I did think it would be thinner than this, but you can see it coming out. It does seem to look a little bit like toothpaste. And that's okay, there's nothing wrong with that. Now being that this is a slightly thicker product also means that it was just a little bit more difficult to apply than some of the other waxes. I think maybe the abrasives within this make it just that little bit more tacky. Or perhaps my really thin foam applicator was just a bit too thin. But I was working it with a little bit of pressure because I want to engage whatever cleaning abrasives are in this. That's it, fold it over. And I really wanted to give it a go over. I felt like I was hand polishing this section. The bottle claims leaving it to cure for 5 to 30 minutes, so I wanted to give it its full cure time. So the rest of the waxes, they all needed buffing off after about 10 minutes of cure time, and all three paste waxes were as easy to buff off as each other. They were all very straightforward, and they did leave a nice gloss and slickness behind. Now moving on to the wing here, this is the V80 diamond sealant. It was a bit more difficult to get out onto my applicator because the dispenser nozzle that normally comes with it broke in transit from Brazil. But I tipped it out onto this foam applicator and worked it in just like the cleaner wax. Mainly to find out if this does have any cutting, cleaning or abrasive abilities within it. But a small amount went a long way, it was easy to see where I was applying it, and it was easy to use. Again this is another relatively thick product, it's not super thin. Now while that's drying and curing, I'm machine polishing with the V80 sealant on the right section of this door. Of course, in typical specy fashion, I forgot to press record on the cleaner wax bit on the left side of the door. So the cleaner wax was used with the machine polisher with a very soft finishing pad. And now I'm working the V80 diamond sealant on the right section mainly to find out if these can be used as a sort of pseudo polish. Can I get some polishing ability whilst applying some protection using a finishing pad or waxing pad and my DA. For those interested this DA was fitted with a 3 inch backing plate for this job. Now buffing off the cleaner wax on the front right of the bonnet here it was super easy, it had been given its full 30 minute cure time. And then the V80 sealant again, just as easy to buff off after its full cure time too. And they both left nice gloss and shine and slickness. Very very straightforward and easy to use. Now for the door here, this is the door which had the two products applied by machine. You can see in the center there, there is a tape line. So where the, the light is pointing, you can see that is the wax side, that is the sealant side, and you can see the tape line in the center. So it has 
darkened and enriched the paint. There is more color. It's less faded. You can see that tape line is definitely more faded. Has it removed much in the way of swirls? Well, I'm going to leave that up to you. Which one you think might have done a better job of improving the look of the paint. Now there's the tape line after removing the tape from the bonnet. The left side had native and the right side had native black. And you can definitely see the black wax where it had caught up against the tape. Now my favorite bit, the water test. You can clearly see the tape lines there. And that's the overall water repellency if you've just had a shower of rain. But let's move in a little bit closer and have a, a more detailed look at each individual wax. So that is native wax at the top left. Very nice water repellency. Very nice beading. Comes off nice and easily. If you like beads, it's certainly very nice. Did I mention it was very nice? Now this is the native black, which has basically exactly the same water behavior as standard native. Very nice. Now moving over to blend, this seems to have a slightly better water repellency. I would expect this from a wax which contains some silica some SiO2. You can see there, the beads just seem to be more round. Definitely what I would expect from an SiO2 infused wax. Now, while the camera has a bit of a fit while I'm kicking everything, there you can see the bead difference. So that's blend, then moving over to native black. Still nice beads just not quite as round. And then over to native standard. Now onto the spray waxes. There's native spray wax. Very good water repellency for a spray wax. Very nice. This is blend spray wax and you can see there's more of a sheeting ability going on here rather than a beading ability flooding the panel you will see more sheeting but giving it a light spray you'll see it does bead relatively well here are the two side by side flood the panel and there's some sheeting on the right but the beads are pretty much the same Now over to the cleaner wax on the front right of the bonnet and you can see it is definitely a sheeter. It's a slow sheeter so realistically I would probably use this more as a pre-wax cleanser than a dedicated cleaner wax on its own but you can see it does bead all right. Let's just have a quick comparison here. So that's the beads of the cleaner wax, the beads of blend spray wax with silica, and then the beads of native spray wax. Now on the wing here, this was the V80 diamond sealant applied by hand. It does seem to sheet that water quite quickly, which is nice. Obviously this is a vertical panel. so. There are going to be less beads sitting on it, but if we throw some beads at it and then take a bit of a closer look, you'll see what it looks like. And there are your beads up close for the V80 diamond sealant. Now on the door here, the left side was the machine applied cleaner wax and the right side was the machine applied V80 sealant. And realistically, I can't tell the difference. The water behavior seems to be 
exactly the same. On a vertical panel, at least. They both seem to sheet. They both bead nicely too. There's the difference. The cleaner wax on the left. And moving across to the V80 sealant on the right. Practically identical. I think it's just down to a personal preference. Now I'm buffing off the black wax here. I applied native black wax to the left side of my bonnet. In the street. In a sort of sunny day. So the panel was warm. But it was given about 10 minutes to cure. And although you can't really pick it up on the camera here on the screen. I did find there was a bit more shine and gloss and depth of that black on the left hand side. Alright, that's the card done. It's looking good on all the sections. Let's talk about individual products and talk about where they were good and where bad, if at all. First up, Native Wax. This one was really nice to use. It was harder than I imagined. I don't know why I imagined it to be softer, but it was a harder wax. It meant I had to work it a little bit more onto the applicator pad, but application onto the bonnet was lovely and smooth. I swiped down the section I was working, small circles overlapping across it, picking up wax as you go. It was very nice to apply. The cure time, I left this for about 10 minutes. I left all the waxes for about 10 minutes. The buff off was nice and easy. There was no real pressure required. It buffed off cleanly. It was a, a very, very nice wax. It gave a little bit of warmth. Again, that might be a placebo thing, but in, in my eyes, there was a little bit of warmth. There wasn't a huge difference to it. On the tape line, barring that from other sections, there, the tape line wasn't massively easy to, to notice, to see. But I could see it, I couldn't really pick it up on the camera because it was it was barely perceptible, but it was there. So it does have something going into the paint, the wax is going into the paint, giving it a bit of a nice warm glow. Water repellency was really nice too, the water behaviour was lovely on that. So it's a great wax. The black version of it was very black, I, I don't know what I was expecting there either, but it was a very black wax. What was interesting about it was I felt it was a little softer. Now, they've been stored in the same place, so they've been stored in the same temperatures. Maybe the black was absorbing more heat, I don't know. But it was certainly smoother to apply. It was is slightly easier to pick up on the applicator. And as you saw on the applicator as well, it was dark. You could definitely see the black coloration on the pad there. But it was a really lovely wax to use. Very smooth. The colour difference, I couldn't really see on either car. There wasn't really much there. The black car certainly had more gloss and shine on one half than the other half. Again, a very, very small amount and barely noticeable by camera, but I could see it with my eyes. As far as the red car was concerned, orange car, whatever you want to call that colour, there wasn't really any noticeable change in the colour. Again, the tape line was very hard to see. You could certainly see it up against where the tape line was. You could see the black wax was there, but what it's leaving behind is very, very little. So I can't say it would do that much to darken the paint, but if you have a black car, you might as well get some black wax to go with it. It certainly won't hurt. Now, moving on to blend. This was really nice, actually. This was very nice to use. It was a little bit stiffer to apply. Again, by the tiniest amount, I'm really splitting hairs, just by the tiniest amount, slightly less easy, but not difficult at all. I mean, not even as much as to say, I don't like using this. I like using this. It went on really well. It buffed off very, very cleanly. And the repellency from it was, was really good on the water side. There was also a more noticeable tape line. There, there seemed to be more going into it, more gloss, more something in the paint on the section that had been waxed with this. I could see the tape line more with this wax compared to most others. That was very interesting. Moving on to the sprayable products, the native spray wax. Now I have an issue with this and actually with the blend. I'll talk about the blend, well, I'll cover them both right now. The problem is this. 
This is on as tight as it can go. This is one of those flexible heads, and that means you can hear it, and you can see some of it there. The trouble is, if you tip this on its side, it's going to leak out. So you cannot transport this very easily. Realistically, you're going to have to get a cap and take the nozzle off and put a proper cap on. If you tip this on its side and you squeeze it, it's going to pour out of here. I'll show you. Uh, hang on, get it there. There it goes. Both ends. Whoa, whoa. Right out of the top, right out of the side. This is not a sealed nozzle, unlike some other products. That's really annoying. So if you're going to travel with this, it's dripping everywhere now. But if you're going to travel with this, you're going to have to take the spray nozzle off. That's an issue. I'm going to put that down there. An issue that is shared by the blend wax as well because of this same idea. This is as tight as it'll go and you can hear it. So it's not airtight. That's annoying. However, the spray wax was very nice and easy to use. Interesting that you don't need to let it haze or cure or anything. You spray it on, you wipe it over, you don't wait for it to dry, you simply flip your towel or take a dry towel and buff it off. It did leave a nice shining gloss, there was slickness there that wasn't there before, and there was good water repellency. So it was a nice product, absolutely no problem with that at all. Very quick and easy to use, I mean almost as quick as a detailing spray to be fair. The blend here was just as easy, just as nice to use. Simple, same idea, exactly the same way of applying the, the native spray wax. The only difference is this one has SiO2, so it should last longer. They state up to four months of protection with this. Now the idea with these is they are more of a topper for the paste waxes, but they're both good in their own right. If you just prefer a sprayable wax, then they're both very good. Now, moving on to the native cleaner wax, and this one was interesting. Like I said, cleaner waxes tend to have abrasives in them and it certainly did seem to do something. It felt more like a polish. It is a thicker product. You saw it coming out of the nozzle here. It was a thicker product. It did feel more like a thicker polish and it did clean up the panel. It did add some shine and gloss. It was more of a sheeter than a beader, which was interesting. But again, you could use that as a pre-wax cleanser for any of the other products I've talked about already. So it was a nice product. Also, I used it with the machine polisher and I could definitely see some extra shine and gloss from it there. It was easier to use as well. So if you prefer using a machine polisher, you certainly can. I used it with uh, the softest pad I had and it was really nice to use, really straightforward. Leave it for anywhere from five to 30 minutes. I gave it the full 30 minutes on one part of the car I gave it a little bit longer, uh, sorry, a little bit less time on the door. Um, at both times, it was really nice. Now, the V80 diamond sealant. The cap here should have been one of these, and unfortunately, it broke in transit from Brazil. That's okay, that happens. So, unfortunately, it wasn't quite so easy to apply, but grab a flip top cap or something, and it'll be just as fine. It did have some abrasive abilities as well. Working this on a panel by hand was nice and easy. Again, it felt like polishing a panel by hand, but it was also just as easy to apply with the machine polisher. And again, there were differences. I could see where this had been used and where it hadn't. So whether it's some filling ability as well, I don't know, but this is a, a synthetic sealant with cleansing ability. So it's a synthetic version of the cleaner wax. A very very good product it was really nice and easy to use gave a really good slickness too and it was more of a sheeter again than much of a beater it still does bead with light rain or light water spray but a deluge of water it will sheet a little bit more generally speaking sealants synthetic products tend to last a little bit longer than a natural wax product so if that's what you're looking for that's a good product and then what they also included in the box, which was rather strange, was a, a mini version of their native black wax. This is the black version. A mini version of blend, the synthetic blended version, and two of these little souvenir wax things. I don't know what I'm going to do with them because they already sent me the big pots 
uh, which is nice and they're going to last me a long time. So I don't know, I may do a giveaway or something with these. Let me know down in the comments below what you guys think. Anyway, these were all really nice and easy to use products. Uh, I don't often get a chance to use paste waxes. And these paste waxes coming from the home of Carnuba Wax, I was really looking forward to them and I honestly really can't say anything bad about the products themselves. Those sprayers are the only real issue I have with them. Otherwise, I cannot fault the products. They all worked fantastically well. They were all easy to apply. They were Some of them were more of a joy than others, but none of them were difficult at all. They were very straightforward and easy. So I'm really happy with them. So I have to give a massive, massive thank you, shout out to Vonix Car Care in Brazil. Thank you so much for sending them across the water to me. I absolutely love them and I'm going to keep them as part of my car care routine, hopefully. Anyway, if you enjoyed this video, please smash that like button. If you are new here, make sure you subscribe to the channel. And while you're there, make sure you ring the notification bell so you don't miss my next video uploads. In the meantime, I've been Spanky. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.